We're just riding around here. Don't know where we're at. Have no idea. Where are we at? I think this is the last time I let you lead me into Alabama, that's for sure. There's the river right over there. There's the old mill right there. River. Riverdale Mill. Oh, now I see some equipment over there. This used to be the mill. There's the plaque. We'll read that if you want yeah. to. Let's come back. Okay. We'll ride down this way and then we'll come back and look at the mill. So time. we're on the Alabama side. Oh, this is, that's where they've been tearing down. The that's the mill. So we'll look down there and then we'll go back and read yeah. the mill. We can go right down there, can't we? Yep. The Alabama side. Chatt Chattahoochee River, Chattahoochee River, sort of across from where, um, is this across from where the, um, the wildlife management community? Yeah, New Hope. New Hope. That's about where we're at. So we're going to take a look down here. Now, now that meal back there, someone told me that it was in the Guinness Book of World Records for being able to enter all four stories from the ground level. Really? Oh, that's yeah. cool. Now, that's not the river. That's, this is that's not part the of the river. So that's part of the river. There's an island in between us and the other side of the river. Well, is that the island you were telling me the people that built that mill, they bought that island right there and did something with it? They yes. Different. Okay. Yes. And the story goes that at the end of the Civil War, uh, this community, the South was busted. Money was worthless. But there was a couple of brothers that had been able to pack away some cotton in a warehouse. And uh, you know what their names were? Who were their names? Hughley's. Hughley's. Remember the Hughley Cemetery? Oh, yeah, Hughley, Alabama, yeah. Yeah. Hughley, Alabama. So those brothers had some money, had the, had the means, and they purchased some of this property, and they built a mill right here on this river. And I think the mill was known to be in two states. Georgia and Alabama because oh, okay. the one across that channel of water. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in on that water right there. Yeah. And uh, they used the water, I guess, to power the. Oh, there's the there's the rest of the river. And then, yep, that's a little island. Yeah, right there. Just went out there fishing. This is uh, this is all river bottom, and we're going back up by the mill. Yeah. And uh, the interesting thing, like I said, was the Hughley brothers. There was already several mills here. There've been several mills here from before the Civil War. But at the end of the Civil War, uh, they invested money and they built this mill up, employed a lot of people, uh, made denim, and the denim was shipped up to West Point where it was turned into different types of material, I guess, or different products. And there was, uh, and I read a story that on Saturdays, the mill workers would all take the Columbus Road, which is the road right here, and they'd take it up to West Point and do their shopping on Saturday. Oh, really? They were shopping at West Point on Saturday, and they come back down the road, back down here to the mill town. And I don't know if you can see those houses over there. Oh, this most far out, uh, most of the houses were owned by the mill, and the employees could live there and, and work here. And yeah, it was getting paid by the company store, basically back then. Yeah, you know, and, and they, they, were, they made a good salary. I you know uh, someone could work all week, probably make them, what, $10? Yeah, but I mean, like, the mill would sell you the house, yeah, was that, yeah, yeah. I know that's the case with like Fifth City. Put your camera right out there. Oh yeah, that's the mill. They're tearing the mill down. I don't know if you can see that. Here. The reason they're tearing it down is the uh, cost of keeping the, the property tax up on a building is expensive. And so the owner sold it and the developer that bought it is recycling the bricks, all the lumber, and then when he's through it out, he'll probably sell the land. And the mill went up in his heel right here see the parts of the hill and it was famous like I said for being able to enter the mill from uh, watch that bottom out there but I wouldn't go that way if I was you no. I wouldn't there you go you just scraped him up for me anyway he didn't even touch it you can enter the mill because it's built on the side of this hill all four stories from the ground level and we're gonna take a look at this little plaque up here right now all right so here we are at the Alabama Georgia Manufacturing Company. According to Joseph L. Lanier, the cotton textile industry came to East Alabama in the valley of the Chattahoochee River in 1866, soon after Appomattox. Two separate groups of local planters and merchants took stock 
of their ruined plantation and businesses and found enough capital to start two mills. Perhaps they did not realize the fact, but their action was symbolic of the New South, a South to be based on progressive agriculture and expanding industry. In August 1866, Alabama Governor Robert M. Patton and Judge William Chilton presided over cornerstone laying ceremonies for the Chattahoochee Manufacturing Company in Langdale and the Alabama Georgia Manufacturing Company in Riverview. The Langdale ceremony was in the morning and after a noonday barbecue attended by some 2,000 people, a similar ceremony occurred in Riverview. The sites for both plants were grist mills before the war. Both mills were powered by water wheels turned by the Chattahoochee River and initially made Osnabergs, a type of coarse cloth. Later, the mills converted to flat duck, a fabric in great demand on the frontier for tents, covered wagons, and many other purposes. And it's continued on the other side, so let's take a look over there. Lafayette Lanier gained a family interest in the Alabama Georgia Mill by marrying Ada Alice Hughley, daughter of the company's president. In the Panic of 1873, both mills closed and Lanier and older brother Ward Crockett became interested in the Chattahoochee Mill. In 1880, the mills reorganized as West Point Manufacturing Company. In the early 1890s, the Riverview Mill was forced to close, but under Lafayette, Lanier's leadership reorganized and incorporated as the Galton Cotton Mills, a subsidiary of West Point Manufacturing Company. Later, the mill secured its third charter from the state of Alabama, becoming the Riverview, Riverdale Cotton Mill. In 1821, Riverdale became a, sub, a division of West Point Manufacturing. Riverdale converted from duck to toweling in 1936. The Riverview Mill is four stories high. Each story has a ground floor entrance, making the mill unique enough for a listing in Ripley's Believe It or Not in 1939. Because of the river boundary line, a portion of the mill is in the state of Georgia. So that's pretty fascinating and a really historic mill site here. So it's kind of a shame that it's being torn down like it is, but at least we get like a very last glimpse of it. Property tax has not been paid on this property for the 2020 tax year. Several attempts, blah, blah, blah. Interesting. This property sold April 26, 2021. This was the entrance to the mill. I imagine every employee probably went through that gate right there. But see these benches? Just imagine over the lifetime of this mill, how many employees sat out here waiting on their ride after work. Yeah. On their ride to wherever they live or whatever. That's interesting right here. Right here. Right here at the entrance to the mill. Riverdale Mill. Riverview, Alabama. So this is again a really cool place a mill that employed so many people and this community grew up around like the other robert talked about earlier so many little mill houses around here and uh, this is 
Well, kind of the fate of most of these types of mills, these old textile mills down here in the south, is they're going away now. They're getting torn down. But, you know, not even that long ago, these places provided, you know, work for these communities and were the main source of employment for these communities. So it's kind of sad to see them disappearing as they are now. Another thing that's really neat about this one is, of course, it was in Ripley's, uh, believe it or not, for being a four-story building that you could enter each floor on ground level. I don't know how well you're able to tell, but that big drop-off right there where they're tearing down the mill, that's how they would do it. But uh, very interesting, very interesting. You got anything to add? Um, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. I'm hungry what I am. That's what I got to add. You know, it's, it's getting late here. I hear you. You've been dragging me around over in Alabama. I don't feel comfortable in Alabama, you know.